Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Oosh! Oosh indeed. Mate, I've seen this. This has been around for a while now, but. I've always been well, curious. Well, it hasn't. Well, this it's, in this format, most it's probably been not. out of production for a little while. Just because we have a trade account with them. They were like, oh, now back in stock. I mean, that could have been a month. But it was on the, like, you know, we haven't had these for a while list. But well, doesn't mean, never. Doesn't mean that they weren't in retailers and stuff. Right. But I've actually been looking to pick this up for a while. Because in our combined arms campaign, we often it's find a lot ourselves of armor on armor. needing to have a lot of armor. And this has got a lot of armor. Mm, and you spend rules. a lot of points in this box. True fact. Uh, yeah. What, so, what can you tell me? It's Does a tank war, isn't it? Tell them what's in it, John. Oh, I was about to say there's nothing start on the back tank for me war. to read. No. Uh, see, it's, look, it's completely blank. Contains three plastic Tiger heavy tanks. That is scary. Three plastic Panther medium tanks, which is cool. Mm -hmm. A5 soft cover tank war bot action supplement. Interesting. Need that. Need that. I am interested in that. A quick start booklet. Mm -hmm. Quick reference sheet, and then you get your templates, tokens, everything else, stack cards, all the dice, damage markers, decal sheets, and dice. Th so you kind of get all the bits you need. Yeah. Like like the sort of Band of Brothers starter set with the dice and the tokens and everything. So I think you, you can play Tank War as its own game, or you can integrate it into bolt action, fully mechanised rolls. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, true. Right, let's get it open, show them what's in it. I mean, it's got six tanks, six tanks in it in some, some rolls. And this is all German. And this is all German. Yeah. Uh, so, it's a deep box, though. Well, that's because there's six bleeding this tanks in it. This retails for about 100. So you're effectively getting the sixth tank and all the month rules and everything free. Yeah, because what are we looking at? Like Content. 25, 30 quid for a tank now? Surely. It, I thought there was still 20. If they're 25, mm, then, they're, then... I think it's good value if it, if it has gone up. Yeah. Oosh! Yeah. So there's about, about 100 for six tanks, which is definitely cheaper than six tanks. And the other bits. So that's your supplement. It's not that, bad. Uh, it's not photographic. Not paper. quite. Not quite as uh, stinky as you'd. you'd it's not as stinky as the regular bolt action one, which is a shame. Um, is it just the tank war supplement? It, it, seems it is so. just that's the tank war said. supplement. It's not. It's, it's not the full bolt action rules. You do need the rules? Most probably. Well, you um, do need the rules. Did it tell you? Maybe you yeah, do. Sorry. You're gonna need the rules. Standard. You're straight in at what armored balloons are. Like. Yeah, you, armored balloons. <laughs> mate. Balloons, mate. Famous uh, armored famous balloon thing. selector, battle scenario, vehicle crew, and experience. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think you are. You do that. need the basic rules as so well. Don't buy this. You can play it, it essentially as a standalone game, as you say, but you still need the rules. <laughs> you still need the rules. So yes and no. All right. So we got we got the booklet. It's smaller than I thought. It said A five. Says A5. No, I mean thinner. Oh, you mean thickness? Thickness, thickness, well, yeah. And there's a mission in there. We'll talk about this in a minute. Wow. Scenarios and bits of You've got the uh, the little booklet thing that they give with you. It's not a start here guide as much as it's... Yeah, yeah. Tells you the contents, a bit of fluff about the... About the history of the tanks. The Panthers. It's also got the destructions in this, so... Nice. So it's kind of... It's a bespoke booklet It's a bit of this. everything, yeah. Truly. Yeah. Truly. Destructions. Uh, scenario on the back as well. Even a scenario bit. on the back. Uh, oh, a whole scenarios. bunch of scenarios in this booklet. I mean, they're just army lists, right? Oh no, there's maps and things. And presumably these correlate with the tank war sets for the others, which we are hoping to review over the coming weeks now that they are back available for trade. Cool. Um, yeah. If you like what you see here, this is available on the Modeling for Advantage oh, store. Shield. Modeling for Advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Modeling for UK. Shield. Thank you. you get your reference. Now, right. this is sort of the basics of. The core rules. Yes. Which is handy. But and you get rulers. Look at that. Rulers. rulers. Right. And then the kind of the meat of what you get is fluff. Everything times fluff. six. Decals and cards, which is nice. Packed by Mirella. Fat numbers, mate. Mate. Big so numbers. So that is a tiger. Tiger. That is a tiger. Tiger. Burning bright. Panther. 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 All extremely terrifying vehicles, sir. Look at all that, though. Uh, you all the dice. dice and some cracker D6s. Another set of pin markers. Always good. And then uh, these, I think we've mentioned, I think we've mentioned these before. 
So obviously you've got your artillery templates on here. That's the main bit. But these are actually all engraved with special symbols for different status effects in the game. Yes. But they're all just shiny silver. <laughs> they but, are. But if you painted them, you could use them. Because yeah. you've got like these tracks for immobilized and turret, turret jam, jam and everything. Yeah. yeah. Pin markers are great. We use loads of these because we use one for each pin. Just but that's of because of camera. Because of camera, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't seen them before, there is a dial with numbers. It goes up to 12. That's a really elite unit that can take 12 pins. Just um, in case, mate. But on camera, you'd never see that in a game, no. so we use one of each. All right, so, yeah, as we said, six pan six tigers, six panthers. I mean... Three. Three, sir. Don't oversell it. Three. three. I'm overselling it. I'm six overselling tanks it. total. Six tanks Three total. tigers, three panthers. How many decals? shapes? Looking at the decals, you get... Six whole sheets, so that is There's loads. one of them say German fact, tiger and one more. panther. Uh, tiger one. Yeah. Yep. Tiger one, tiger one. Sorry, you've got to take a little while here. German armoured decal, standard. Oh, standard. It doesn't panther, say standard panther, on it, but it just says German armoured decal sheet version one. So the tiger is the one with the big numbers and a couple of Balkan crosses on. Yeah. Whereas the standard one, most of these are red. This has got the... Um, the... Division symbols. It's got division it? symbols on the here. Panzer Lair, which and is a pound sign. Did which you know? I don't know all. Um, I think that's 15th Panzer. That's Panzer Lair. Or maybe that's 21st Panzer. That's one of the SS divisions, those two. Mm. My eyes are not great. And they're like kill uh, markings, and then there's. Yeah. Yeah. But there are division markers there on there. There are division markers on there. Which is cool. So it's and black numbers. Um, it's also on the tag on, if you noticed, it's got the 131 number in red, which is the tiger that is at the tank museum. That's the one, isn't it? That, that, yeah, it's in Britain. It's a, the, it's the most and famous it's also tiger that ever was. Got double oh seven uh, for when James Bond <laughs> drive around in it. What's fact? Um, I mean, I don't know how much more there is to say about this, other than we, the tanks we, we have can, been out forever. The tanks have been out forever. Um, so what these are? These are so looking at this tiger. I built one of these very recently. How did you uh, find it? Yeah, it was. So, th this is one of these repurposed artillery kits. It's yes. been rescaled. Um, so, it's it's not strictly a wargaming kit. It's not a complex modeler's kit, but it isn't sort of it's not designed a, it's not from the ground up for parts that you just plug it's, together. Yeah, it's right. not three parts that you just plug together. But, right down to like the turret is only in a few pieces. It's not yeah. in ten pieces. Yes. There's the, there's the there's the main part of the turret. There's the bottom of it, and you've got most of it assembled. You know, you attach the gun man like a few bits. So you know, there's there's more like sort of fifty pieces here rather than hundreds. And I'm seeing a lot of the details that you might sometimes find in a model making kit. There's a separate piece like that, like the hatch. shovel and yeah. the, the axe. So these yeah. are moulded on. So yeah. that's a good thing. The forward hatches on the hull are not. You, okay. you glue them in. I suppose that's to give you the option, option of for an open, an open one. But you haven't got something. figures to put in there. Um, there is, I didn't use him, there is a sculpted commander figure. Which is great and everything, but the scale but, is so far off from the <laughs> artillery versus Warlord I, I find these guys are quite small, yeah. I also think they're usually not very bonny. They're not very nice models. Well, no. Compared to, because they're usually molded as a single piece. Yes. I just got to the, the, their arms are very tight in, so it's a kind of single mold, because that's sort of the way the injection molding works. It has to all go in one plane, whereas you're so used to having a model that's a lot more dynamic with your bolt action multi part kit. It's um, not bad. It's just like, not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, it, w this one went together pretty easily. Um, it, so there weren't, I didn't find things like the tracks really challenging when you often do. That's good. You often they really do. don't line up. There, weren't, there aren't lots of fiddly bits, like there aren't a lot of um, machine guns externally on the Tiger uh, in the way there are on some of the American tanks. Good. They've got machine guns sticking out everywhere. Um, you may have seen, some of you will have heard this before, just German tanks are often shown in artwork with three machine guns. One in a cupola, one coax, and one bow machine gun. But, but actually, they only issued with two. There's just a different mounting position for the same machine gun. So they'll just move it out and yeah. put it wherever they the, need the, it. The, the one in the commander's hatch, despite what you see in the movies, the commander does not want to be firing a machine gun exposing his body. He wants to be commanding the tank. If you're in one of the most heavily armoured tanks <laughs> in the war, yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd yeah. want to be inside it. If, you, if you're machine gunning somebody, something's gone terribly <laughs> wrong with what they're doing here. It's an anti-aircraft machine gun. Yeah. 
Yeah. But also later in the war, there's like firing machine guns at planes is the wrong response to being bla- attacked by planes. Yeah. So they're kind of lying in the woods, shoot. mate. But the American ones, loads of machine guns. All of them. Makes more noise. Awesome. Have you built one of the Tigers? I've, I don't know. Was it? Did I not build that thinking about it? Did I build did the Tiger? I don't know if it did. I've, I'm going to say no for now because you are the German guy. We're well, yeah. not German. But There's a chance that you did. But I, I think I might remember have. remember building it. But then maybe I just remember painting it. I definitely finished painting it recently. So I may, I, I may or may not have built it. We picked that. it up at Warlord there last year. I think now you mention it, maybe you did, so I'm just talking a crop. <laughs> <laughs> One of us built it. It wasn't the memory, eh? Who needs uh, it? The panther. Panther, panther, panther. Panther, panther, panther. The replacement for the panther 4. Replacement for the panther 4. Yeah, I mean, it's good that in the box it does describe it as a medium tank. Yes. On the box cover. Because in bolt action it does count as a heavy tank, or does it just have heavy front it, No, armor? a lot of the German stuff has got, like, yeah, the panther's got... The it's got 10 of front armour, The it isn't called a heavy called tank. A heavy tank. Yeah. And it's, it's also got a whacking great gun. And it's got a whacking great gun, yeah, it's a very powerful tank. Panther is built as a straight up replacement for Panther, Panzer IV. Which is crazy. It seems like a very powerful tank, but it's built to be better than the other medium tanks. Yep. It would, if Germany had, had more resources or war had gone on longer or whatever, it was replacing production of Panzer IV, but there were never going to be enough because there wasn't enough of anything, um, including bread yeah. in Nazi Germany. More resources um, you need. I built one of these kits a little while ago, and it is a little bit more involved. There's a little bit more to this. Um, you've got a lot more of the smaller components around. Um, so the, a lot of key details, like you mentioned before, some tools and the engine deck are nicely sculpted on. Which is always good. Which is always Not good. You don't want to fiddly around with those things. But things like the rear, the whole assembly of the rear of this is in several parts. Those exhaust pipes look uh, like they look could quite be easily small. snapped. Yeah. Now, on the plus side, and I think that's because they're different versions of slightly different exhaust system. Mm. So, um, you know, whether this is a D, an A, or a G... Um, is down to that, but it was just it was a little bit more involved, just involved a little bit of care. But the pieces are strong on the sprue, you know, as in it's not going to break. You're not damaging them, breaking them off. They're not they don't come damaged, yeah. Um, and similarly, the tracks they're not they're not in ten pieces. Two parts, man. Two parts. Up yeah. and under. That's good. If you haven't made an Italian tank before, the tracks is where you need to put your effort in. To make sure that they're aligned opinion, on the wheels. Make sure they're lined up. Seal no the, where they join. Yeah. Glue yeah. glue them to the wheels, the road wheels and the running gear. What, glue it at one end, hold it, wait till it's dry, then glue it to the other end. If you just glue, fit it, glue it and leave, a gap will appear. Sag and it just... It will just sag just a, a little bit. Naturally. Just naturally, yeah. That's kind of lessons learned. And um, I got a stu, an STU42 I'm working on at the moment, where I'd forgotten this and I literally just did that. So I'm going to build some uh, fascines. Oh, right. <laughs> across the front so you can't see where the tracks, where that has happened. It's not a fault necessarily with the kit, it's just the weight of the piece, really. Yeah. There's nothing to hold it there. Yep. Now, I think Panther, should I take, we should have taken it out of the if bag. You're intending to, if you're intending to, uh, you're intending to talk about it, and I'm not even taking it out of the bag, why am I not doing that? Um, yeah, there is there is some um, texture, some teeth on oh, good. the tracks, which is going to help you. And I think the way that they work, they align. They don't kind of plug into the wheels. They just keep the wheels in line with what you uh, want. The wheels are like that. Yeah, it looks like they might run. Oh, that's the bloody tiger. But it looks like they might run in specifically in, in one in section. The, there, in the, in the, yeah, so the, the wheels are interleaved. So they run on the on the inside ones, I, I think. I think they go on that central bit. I think the central wheel's in there. That looks like it lines up with yeah. that. Perfect, as you said. Yeah. So that's helpful. Yeah, that lines up with the... Because some of the kits don't have that. So they're quite free to slide. So they will move around a little bit, yeah. And wander. Yeah. So what you so what the what the tracks are, so the gaps are going at the top of the wheel that's on the outside. The gaps in the key in the teeth here. And then the teeth run on the because the one on the inside ones. is thinner. 
yeah so you might get away with assembling the whole thing i haven't built two so i don't know but if i was doing it again i'd probably put rather than gluing this to the hole just do it I'd get the, get the tracks on the wheels and then put it to that. That could turn out to be bad advice, but that would be my second my second go at building a panther. That's yeah, how give I it a go. Do it. See better or That's worse. How I do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are those more fragile parts. So this is I don't, I don't like know whether it's a, it's an aerial, but it's a, it's a ring around the cupola. The machine gun mount is on. Is that packs. so you can go? Wee! And poss possibly, maybe I, I don't so. know if it's on runners. I think so. And like I say these slightly more fragile pieces, but they're not difficult to get out. You know, they're not the kind of sprues that you end up damaging the equipment. Not under again. stress or anything. Not under any from stress. The no. Sprue game. Okay. Um, Panther's a fantastic, fantastic looking tank. It's, it is. Uh, so, good so is Tiger. So I mean, I, that is iconic. That figure, right? That yes. Scared that, that's still a wet. A lot of yeah. people it still does. And tang, Tiger's probably a shade earlier than Panther. A shade. Just a fraction. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about Tiger, though, is um, we tend to think of Tiger as a late war tank. And it isn't. Tiger's a, a Tiger's a mid-war tank. Yeah. And Tiger, that's why it was so Tiger, terrifying, right? Yeah, because, because we Tiger, had nothing. Tiger production <laughs> ceases uh, in '44. All the all the Tigers that are ever built are built between '42 and '44, because they start building King Tiger, and oh. it entirely replaces production of Tiger. Oh, you still do have tigers in Normandy. Yeah, you right up to the end. Battle of the Balls right at the end. But they were built the year before. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, because it was no longer powerful enough to do the job. Yeah. Against like, the Soviet time. IS tanks and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, as I said, we, we think of Tiger as a late war tank. But actually, these things are at Kursk. They perform a lot better than Panther does at Kursk because it also has its debut at Kursk. Right. Panther. But Panther's a lot less reliable. Oh, really? A lot less reliable. And and these are not these reliable. Are gas gas, <laughs> yeah, these are just gas guzzlers. But, um, but Panther, I think it's like a technology thing, among other things. Right. To, to get that high velocity 75 and all that heavy front armour in a medium tank That's is a, a lot tough, of... It, yeah, was more of a challenge than creating a heavy tank mm. that, could, that could do that. So what, is, what do you think? I mean, I think this. I think it's pretty straightforward a decision if you want to buy this. Is because if you want to play tank battles in association and you want tigers and panthers, I mean, you'd want to, right? Because otherwise, why? You can only ever really fill one tank unless you wangle the, uh, the standard bolt. Especially action. these ones. I mean, I wasn't exactly. telling you what tiger is. Well, it does tell you points, the cards. Uh, that's a panther. Tiger ones are regular. You can't have them inexperienced. Regular are three nine five. Off the bat, Veterans 474. Veteran 474, yeah. So that's, that's nearly half the points. That's if you nearly play half the points of a standard sort of game, just game. one Tiger. But that's the point about taking it to Tank War, is about saying, okay, we're going to put that to one side. up here. Now, to be fair, that's you get a lot of Shermans for farming and points, though, right? <laughs> Most probably, yeah. So Most this, you get a platoon. This definitely fills out your points. And that's, if I, if I have, um, a, you know, potentially a criticism of it, shall we say, these are iconic German tanks, yes. definitely. But they are also expensive ones. Yes. In in terms of gameplay, yeah. these tanks cost a lot of points. So would I... Now, they're putting them in threes because it's platoons. And that's kind of historically accurate. Tanks are in platoons. Early war, I think German platoons pay per strength of five tanks. But the reality is they're never five tanks in a platoon. Just in service on any one yeah. day. Yeah. Um, even if they have all five, two of them don't work for one reason or another. <laughs> and that's about combat readiness of everybody's tanks. Um, but as it, you know, but in term, in terms of the game, would it have been better to be able to go and fight the other forces if they put three pans of fours in there instead? Or just yeah, giving you could a more they, mainline. They could have tank. done that, right? I mean, would I don't it, know what the competition whatever is. choice they want to make. Well, yeah, true. I think I think they're great tanks. Um, I mean, you know, would two two and two be better? It's, it's it's difficult to know, but certainly this is a very expensive force. It is to start yeah, a tank off war. the bat. Mate, looks like you get special character tanks in here. You've got all the aces in there. You got like auto carriers. Yeah, and all that. yeah. Using legendary crew. Legendary that's interesting. Crew. All right, well, that's that's something we'll have to have a look at. We'll have to have a look at that. What 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 do you think, John? You think? I mean, I love the idea of armored combat, but I think to, 
whether it would work on our 4 by 4 table or not. Yeah. It's another question. Is it tag? You'd definitely shoot from one corner yeah. of the table to yeah. the other. If it was an 8 by 4 or bigger, I'd, I'd love the idea of having platoons at 28 mil rocking around. So the, the, the last thing to say about it is that it, because it integrates with ball action and it's, yeah. f it's fully in, in, integrated in that, you don't have to be playing World of Tanks to have a mainly tank action. So no. infantry are not gone. No, no, you know, no. Like the, I mean, you can have so, you put some infantry exactly. alongside. You fight a game that is fundamentally about tanks. Yes, but you can still have some guys or well, some guns. Thing. You need infantry, right? Well, <laughs> battles look weird when there are no infantry yeah, involved really weird. Uh, whatsoever. So you would certainly would expect to see at least some somewhere. Support and, them. And tank war is kind of that game, I think. Where you want yeah. to fight tank heavy. But still fully integrated with your infantry, you know, tank weapons and so forth. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm well up for trying it. And there's some surprising features in here, like you say, legendary crew and tank aces. Interesting. I think, I think it's a cracking set. Great value if you want six gem tanks for the late war, or if nothing else, the mid to late war. Mid to late war. Be seeing you. Bye. Bye. So if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army, on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching.